Hi everyone, and particularly fellow catalogers. Um, I'm about six months or over six months late to this particular party, but I really wanted to review this in depth, so I've left it on my uh, desktop, just waiting for some time where I can actually thoroughly dig into it. Um, I have heard long, long ago when it first came out that there was a lot of discussion of it on AutoCAD, but I teach catalogers, so I generally don't get to catalog much myself these days, so I'm not on AutoCAD to hear about the greatness of bib frame and all the nuances of things. Um, if you like AI topics in other uh, realms and you haven't logged into YouTube, please do so. I did post a video yesterday of uh, some articles from Reason about various AI topics, but I had to mark it as 18 and above because some of them are a little spicy. This is not, though. This is cataloging. Yay! Um, I'm also going to refer to this art author as uh, Mr. B. I believe the pronunciation of last name is, is Brzezkowicz, but uh, yeah, my, my Polish is not necessarily perfect. Brzezkowicz? Brzezkowicz. I'm betting it's Brzezkowicz. Now that I massage that in my mouth enough. But anyway, I'm not going to knock him. Um, the guy, he's a, probably a real nice guy. But uh, yeah, he's uh, from a university that I hadn't heard of, and I'm from a university most people haven't heard of. So I looked up Carlo, and it's in uh, Pittsburgh, so I should check him out the next time I'm there. Um, <laughs> this is actually at least an interesting exploration. As we'll see, it is definitely, uh, yeah, the robots are not taking my job anytime soon. And again, I'm not going to um, read this to you. You can definitely look up the references on your own since I already spent like an hour rereading it. But uh, yeah, they use the free research uh, preview and allegedly to generate mark records in RDA. We'll see in a minute that some of them, even though he claims he's telling it to use RDA, are not in RDA, and the OCLC WorldCat record isn't either. Um, so I guess that's okay. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, the theory is it will make it in RDA. Um, yeah. Uh, six items, including one with no corresponding WorldCat entry. Uh, yeah, that one's particularly interesting. And uh, started with uh, a reprint of Interview with the Vampire. And uh, I'll dig into this in more detail shortly. But there's notable differences, including no foreign language headings, which <laughs> is not the differences I'm going to pick on. Because, um, again, I... A lot of us are, at least in the States, a lot of us are dumb in the States and don't know multiple languages anyway, so if you want to add the, um, like, oh, Jesus, no, I'm blanking on uh, the French headings and things, like, you're going to have to do that for us anyway. It is interesting, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, that uh, it's trying, trying to use generative AI to generate Library of Congress call numbers, and this I could see as a really good use because... <laughs> I have spent a lot of time um, hand generating them. Normally when I teach cataloging, I explain that you like take the first subject and sometimes if you're lucky, there's a 053 field in that subject's authority record that'll tell you approximately like where in the catalog it should go, in which case you pull down your happy little books. Yes, I have happy little reference books. I still call them the yellow books with the Library of Congress call numbers in them that are more specific and then you find something that actually describes it and then in my case you go back and look at your own catalog to figure out, you know, where exactly to fall on the shelf, which has more to do with the cutter number afterwards. Um, the nice thing about taking over and training copy catalogers now is, <laughs> the one I have now at least is well accustomed to doing her own cutter numbers. When I first arrived on the job, like, they were very much like, we can't do any call number generation whatsoever. And I'm like, they are cutter numbers, guys. You're just basing them off of 100 or 245. You're not coming up with subject cuttings or ranges or... Anything exciting like that. But, yeah, this this would help me a lot, because I'll admit it can sometimes be like a half-hour process to come up with a call number, which is sad, but there you are. Um, so, uh, he thinks it's comparable. Again, I will show you in a minute, and we will have a, <laughs> have a discussion. You can post comments on this. Um, and it can create original mark records, and this one is the one, well... Maybe not this final pressing, but I'll go through the sound recording ones because that's what, until quite recently, I used to teach pretty regularly. Um, so yeah, it shows like sample text, which, yeah, it's very, it's very strange sample text. It's very strange assumptions, <laughs> um, some hallucinations, but not quite. All right, so um, they can extract essential metadata, but I don't know if it's necessarily any better at doing that than current cataloging and publication methods. Um, 
and it's not limited to specific formats and languages. So that was the nice thing. If you, like me, again, are a dumb yank and barely speak another language, and I say barely because my French is so rusty, um, <laughs> or don't know one at all, the ability to have translation or cataloging um, that would be able to look at like a title page and move it around in the right places, I could totally see being super helpful. Um, yeah, we have a lot of shortages, uh, for example, in Chinese, Japanese, and Korean uh, catalogers, as well as um, Pashta and other Arabic languages. I know I'm not coming up with it, but anyway, you get the idea. Um, they use, it's been trained off of WorldCat, the front end of WorldCat. I don't know how much OCLC agrees with that because we've already had the whole showdown between OCLC and Clarivate over Clarivate allowing people to ingest OCLC records and then like putting them up as community zone records, which you're not allowed to do now, which is good. Um, so I'm not quite certain that <laughs> OCLC is really happy that ChatGPT has been allowed to train on WorldCat. Anyway. So definitely not a complete replacement for human catalogers. Uh, yeah, they often contain discrepancies. In my opinion, they contain so much garbage, it would just be faster for me to type my own record. But I am old and cranky, so you don't necessarily have to believe me. Um, and bias. So yeah, I'm not going to go very far down to the AI bias. We can have a long conversation about that later. Um, but again, it's pulling out of bias databases made by biased people, which is going to make biased results because that's how generative AI works. It also talks a little bit here about copyright infringement. So um, if you're doing, for example, I know Clarivate's working right now on AI um, content summary descriptions for 520 fields. And if it's to like the description of the original work or, for example, summary content that's put on like the back of the paperback. Um, yeah. How does that how does that work with copyright and intellectual property rights? And maybe if my cousin is one of the 20 people watching this, you can comment on this because I'm sure you are having a fun time teaching this in law class. Um, yeah, especially for books or music when small portions can be protected, which again is why you put quotes around it and cite it when you have to put it in catalog records. Uh, they also talk about misattribution of authorship. Um, yeah, that seems pretty obvious. We'll see one shortly where you're like, that's not an author, that's a publisher, you silly bot. <laughs> Um, generating content based on the data, again, ownership issues, uh, especially given potential commercial value, which is one of the long-standing arguments um, with OCLC being able to defend its catalog records, even though I don't necessarily agree with it because OCLC is nonprofit, probably the last nonprofit, maybe, I don't know. Um, but it's, you know, we have to buy services from them. On the other hand, we contribute high-quality metadata and well-constructed records, which Again, everyone says the bots are coming for your stuff and the fuzzy match will come and get you. And I'm like, no, I think our information distribution and description um, that we've developed over hundreds of years should survive a bunch of people with computer science degrees looking at it and going, that was a strange way to do it. Um, no, we thought about this very thoroughly. And then they also talk about disclosure of sensitive confidential information. And I'm kind of like, how would this inadvertently disclose unpublished findings? I don't know. Maybe it's reading parts of the deep web that... Um, I haven't been exposed to. Anyway, um, yeah, it should ensure metadata standards are appropriate and the resulting records are regularly evaluated. Um, one of the things they don't mention in here is like the best practices for music cataloging as well as some other OLAC. Uh, well, they don't do video in here, so I guess that, that disqualifies that one. So best practices for music cataloging standards, um, that is not mentioned at all as being part of the ingest, which is kind of sad. Um, yeah. And anyway, monitoring, developing, and you got to check your, your training data. And then you also got to check, again, quality control that's not spitting out complete garbage. Um, <laughs> which, as we'll see, I think it does. All right. So this is the bot generated version. I found it kind of funny through the DM there for item in hand. Um, it has a single day, but it's a reprint, which we'll see in the official record is addressed. Um, found it kind of strange that it just hallucinates O4s for D DLC, but that's just me. Um, it claims it's RDA, but there's no greater role over here. Um, this is also a 260 field, but I can't remember off the top of my head if it stays that way in the next one. Um, P is still P and not pages. The rest of this is fine. 
Um, I did check on Horror Tales because I was sitting there. I'm like, that sounds like a fake. <laughs> that sounds like a fake subject heading. Um, it's not. I just left it highlighted because personally I would think this would be more of a um, genre form heading. But it can stay. My big question here is why did it repeat itself? I don't know if that's just a display issue um, when they captured the record. But yeah, you look at the real one and you're like, oh, look, it's a reprint from a 1976 book. Um I did check out what this 010 is, and they have two different numbers for it, and this is the only one that notes that this was like a previous, I think it's a Library of Congress classification number. Yeah. Anyway, I don't use those, but they are different on the two, as are um, the 020 fields for the uh, ISBN, which is a little strange, too. Uh, in this one's case, they actually were able to generate a call number. There's not a call number on the chat GPT one. I don't know if that's just because uh, Mr. B decided, didn't ask it to do it at that point. Um, but Anne Rice, I presume, I did not cross-check this, has her own um, American uh, fiction or American literature heading, and then interview, and then the publication date. So, um, yeah, this is, I, I, don't, I don't use those fields, so I'm not commenting on that. Um, as you can see, this doesn't have the creator role, but it does have, like, her full controlled name. And you'll see from this 260, this was also an AACR2. Like I said, there's a couple of these in here where I'm like, you said to do RDA, and it does like this weird partial RDA, like um, Memorial Cat or OCLC went through and like beefed up all their records with these 33X fields without checking on the rest of it. Um, <laughs> so this is one of those fun hybrid records. Um, published May 5th, and this one, yep, we did have the 33X fields, right? Wrote out pages, which is good. Uh, this explains like why it's got the reprint up here in your 080008 field. Excuse me. This one actually does a summary note, which the other one did not even try. Um, and this one also has a subject heading for the character of Lestat um, and imaginary interviews instead of like horror tales. And as mentioned previously by Mr. B, it does have a lot more. Um, John reform terms as well as other uh, authorities or controlled vocabularies in there. All right, take a little sippy sip here. Okay, so this is Low by David Bowie, re released on vinyl. We have a uh, USB commit girl, UPC code here. But we also have catalog numbers, and I'm highlighting these because, oddly enough, it says label not identified. So how you get a label um, catalog number without identifying who the heck the label is is a little confusing. Uh, we do have David Bowie's Performer, and I'm highlighting this simply because uh, when I teach cataloging, I try to explain to people that you should put the most specific role next to each person as you possibly can. In David Bowie's case, he would be a singer, not a performer. Um, the same goes for the folks down the 700s, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, I forgot to highlight this, but if this is supposed to be RDA, you are not supposed to have this uh, sound recording in here. General material designator is, you know, off, off, off the map. Uh, all right, and they call it a sound disc instead of an audio disc. This subfield B has been replaced by 344 fields and shouldn't be in there at all. This 336, as well as these like itty bitty bits in the middle. Um, well, this first one's just straight up wrong. It's It says notated music for those of you that can't read all the squishiness. Um, I'm not judging it based on the fact there's missing spaces. Uh, <laughs> but it says a notated music. So for those of you who don't catalog regularly, notated music is sheet music scores, things like that. Um, I don't catalog that at all because I stink at music. But uh, yeah, this should this, this should be like sound recording and not notated music, or I'm sorry, performed. We'll see in a second. <laughs> I'm having a, having a brain fart. Um, but audio, this is definitely not like the audio code, you know, sound. Audio disc, you know, this is not the audio disc. Um, yeah, definitely not the right codes. It does say originally released in 1977, but that's just like a footnote in it. Um, it also talks about this lyrics and full credits on container insert, and I highlighted this because I was trying to figure out... Oh, let me see. This should be represented up in here somewhere. And of course now... Ah. Probably by the end. Oh, no, wait, that's the notated music. Excuse me. That's the problem. I didn't put a whole bunch of comments out on this before we started recording. But... Uh, 
Oh, that's why. We'll see in a second. Because it goes down here and uh, adds a 730, and the only thing I can figure out you would add a 734 is because there's, like, lyrics on it. But, yeah, it's not, it's not happy. Anyway, the 511, I like this 511 better. We'll see in the official record that it doesn't go into this much detail. So this is definitely something I think ChatGPT could help us with. Because um, I'll admit this is a lot of typing and I don't like doing it either. Uh, it did grab a 518 field, which is nice. Um, it did not grab a 043 to correspond with it. 043, uh, 033, excuse me. Um, it's also not formatted, which I don't like, but that's just me. Um, we have the rock music designation from the air, but then we also have rock music designation from the air in which this is released, which doesn't make any sense because it's a reissue. Um, we have rock music England. We also have this incredibly fun hallucinated um, <laughs> subject heading called vinyl LPs. Uh, there is something similar in the form of work and things we'll see in a minute, but yeah, this is this is definitely not a subject heading. I mentioned just a second ago, these guys would be musicians and not performers. And then I have no idea what this 902 garbage down here is. That's that's just weird. All right. So in this case, we actually have, oh my gosh, we have a catalog number, but also a publisher, Parwaphone. Um, this one has two different dates because uh, this is the presumed release date from the catalogger, but it has a phono copyright of 2017. Uh it's out of London, but again, this is cataloger supplied, but we do have the ENK up there. And I'm not super great at reading leader fields or 008s um, without having to explode them, so I'm not going to get too detailed on that. As you can see, we do have audio disc. It is 12 inches. Okay, I highlight this in another one because I wasn't quite certain if we were still keeping them in inches because it's been a minute since I did, um, it's been a minute since I did vinyl. I think we still do keep them in inches, but uh, yeah, everything else is in like centimeters. So yeah, as you can see, perform music. Again, I was having a brain fart a minute ago. Too much talking and hearing myself speak. And then we have that vinyl LP is actually like a 340 subfield A vinyl. And then we have the stuff that used to be in a subfield B in the 300 is broken out and then it's given all of its own separate fields and it's separate subfield 2 RDA codes. Uh, we also have a nice note explaining the original release day, which explains why we, well, that doesn't explain why we have the two dates up here, but. Um, yeah, I would have put something in indicating the original release date, but that's okay because there is other stuff you can put in the leader field. Again, blanking on it, but it's fine. We have some producers. I do not like this 500 field. That's just me. Um, David Bowie with accompanying people. This is one of the ones where I'm like, well, I wish I could merge these records because this 505 is great and I highly would like the robot to help me do that. Um, if it could learn to, you know cut out skip characters and things, although it's hard to say what should be a skip character and what shouldn't when you're doing 505 titles. Uh, this 538 I thought was interesting. I haven't seen one of these before for LPs. Um, not to say that you can't. I went and looked it up in OCLC documentation. It's like, no, you need to explain like the player and stuff if it's not obvious. Um, <laughs> so this is the first time I've seen that, but I, I, I can see it for older formats. You may want to do that. This one also does rock music as well as pop music. Uh, the chat GPT only focused on the rock music. Uh, and then it also threw in progressive rock music so it knows a little bit more. And we have all these lovely headings in other languages. And it also managed to give us um, two genre form term matches for popular music and progressive rock again. And then way at the bottom is the producer. And again, I would have I would have kept that 511 note from the other record. All right, if you're still sitting with me, because we're almost at 20 minutes, um, <laughs> I'll try to breeze through this lovely one. Um, yeah, there's two of these. This one's in German. The next one's in Russian. Um, giant disclaimer, I am not a non-English cataloger, so this is going to be a bit of a flail. But this is the bot-generated one. Um, so it's in German, originally in Portuguese. I highlighted this PCC because I'm like, is it allowed to just hide, it, like hallucinate that it's a PCC record? I'm like, I'll, I'll just say it is. Who cares? Anyway, <laughs> they found an 050 for it, which is good. Um, and it does actually make sense as to where it would go, with the possible exception of this P, because if this is the cutter number, it should be cuttering off the F, and not the P, but I didn't dig into that super far. Um, this also doesn't have, again, attributions, if we are considering this RDA, but we might not be, because the original, again, might be in AAC or two. So we have this 240 that doesn't get carried over into the other one. 
<clears throat> and we also have this lovely um, by Paula Freer. And I thought this was like translated from Portuguese because, again, my German is non-existent. Um, I noticed later in the better record, though, it says something like author of Portuguese something or other. So I think this is author and not translated from. So, again, those of you who know German, this is probably a good laugh for you today. Anyway, if we have 1971, that's fine. Pages is fine. All this is fine. Uh, it does note in German, which is why I'm surprised not to see another like language note in the zeros fields. Uh, we have education, we have philosophy, we have popular education, Brazil. I had this highlighted, but popular education, even though to me it sounds like um, a, gen a hallucinated heading is not, it's it's a real heading. So, for what that's worth. And then we have Walter Jones as the translator. All right, now on the official record. Um, and I think this is, I don't know, this is some sort of like our odd garbage data. I think this is meant to be subfield A. Um, but we have German, Portuguese, I'm not, okay, giant disclaimer, I have no idea what these 084 fields are, we don't use them, um, so this could be perfectly right. It just doesn't look like the RVK ones, and it's throwing me off. Anyway, we have a controlled name for pa Paulo Freire, and we also have, um, with Ein, Ein von Erslang, and then talks about the author of something in Portuguese, maybe. Uh, yeah, I told you, no German, no German knowledge. And if this one's supposed to be RDA, which it clearly is not, because it has a 2 6 now, so it has a P for page. Uh, so it's kind of apples to kiwi at the moment. And then again, all these fun headings that I can't tell you if they're right, wrong, or upside down, because I don't see any that actually are in English. There's no pedagogy? No, we have. Okay. So we have ones where it's like trying to come up. <laughs> Trying to come up with the Library of Congress uh, headings, but our Library of Congress headings, as far as I can tell, are not in German. Um, so that should be like pedagogy. Yeah. I didn't highlight that in the first pass, but I see that now. All right. So here's the... Um, oh, I'm sorry. That was the that was the person record. Picking on chat GPT. This is the person record. So, uh, yeah. Apparently that does... <laughs> that does match to something at some point. Like I said, not so good at the foreign language. All right, we have a Russian um, <laughs> chat GPT bot translated for the print edition in Russian of a Chinese text. Good times, right? I thought this was garbage. It's actually in the other record, the O2Os. Um, personally, I've never seen it where they put the language of original work before the language of the thing. But again, this is also in the human record, so I, I guess that's okay. <laughs> Uh, we have the author, we have the thing in Russian. For those of you, again, who aren't used to seeing non-English cataloging like me, um, this is perfectly normal to do the duplicate fields. I went and, like, you'll see in the, in, in the official one, this is normal, apparently. <laughs> um, we have a sci-fi universe, and I just wanted to point out, these headings actually, to me, look like fake headings, and they look like they're hallucinations. Weirdly enough, if you scroll down to the next record when we will in a sec, um, these are the exact same headings that are in there. So I'm like, did it just grab crap and reproduce crap? So if you, again, back to the garbage in, garbage out, my dad used to say, if you have crappy cataloging to go into it, um, it's just going to like reproduce that. <laughs> and then we have this translation of, which again, I think is bad cataloging. As far as I know, this is supposed to like have a subfield U or something, a subfield I, excuse me, not U. I don't know where I'm coming from today. I think it just goes we're almost up to 30 minutes and, you know, I've asked my nice husband to be very quiet while I discuss these boring things with you. All right. So I mentioned most of the rest of this in the previous one, but as you can see, the, the subject headings are the same, which is really weird. It makes me go, maybe this is just not well cataloged to begin with. And because it's trained on world cat data, if it's poopy to begin with, it's just going to reproduce the poopy. All right. So here's the bot's attempt at creating a record from scratch, doing original cataloging, aka my job, which will be my job at least for another 20 years, between that and separating things out. And we do have, I checked what G was in its language of accompanying material, which is why that other one I saw everybody was talking about lyrics threw me off. Um, so I'm like, why would you, okay. Okay, um, but there is, well, maybe not, I was going to say. Does this actually, nope, nope, nope. I scrolled too far down. So I can't even tell if there's, like, in, in any accompanying material whatsoever. So I'm, I'm not quite sure where we're getting Spanish from. Maybe it meant subfield A for Spanish. Um, yeah. 
The 047, for those of you that don't write catalog musical that often, uh, generally speaking, we don't use uh, the 047, the 048 all that often with popular music. Um, however, I just wanted to point out this VD is not an actual uh, code for this field. Uh, PP for popular is definitely, but VD is not applicable. Um, this KA01 is like one piano to replicate the the work. Again, more often used in notated music, and this sounds like it's not just piano music. Uh, maybe it is. I don't know. Didn't listen to it. Um, I did check the call number that it gave you form in the Library of Congress call number system because we do ours this way too, and it's not great, but it is what it is. Um, and this does put it down in the ethnic music, so for what that's worth. And also, seeing as you spent so much time looking at RDA, why would it spit out something with a subfield 4 and a code instead of using the subfield E, which we're all trying to get things to move to, or at least spit out both? And this also, this mood rings thing, it's assuming it's a 100 field. It's not. It's a corporate entity. You need to know the difference. This should be a 110. And at first I thought this was an error too, but you can kind of see down here, there's a B-side, and the B-side is, like, that's the... That's the label on the B-side, because I'm like, this is garbage. No, it's not. Anyway, um, cataloger, thinking it's 2013. Okay, that's fine. New York, okay, that's fine. Um, again, we have this issue where it's cramming this in here. I only highlighted this because, again, I wasn't so sure. Um, and mood rings, this adds nothing. I used to... <laughs> it drives me crazy, because I'm like, never write a 511 in there if you're just going to say performed by the guy that's on the label. Um, you need to break out what the band members are actually doing or don't put it in there at all. Uh, it's kind of nice that it extracts limited edition 500 copies. However, limited edition should be like a 250 up here. Just a thought. Um, this one actually did grab rock music and popular music, and I'm just questioning why we didn't get popular music as a 650 field. And again, why do we have uh, these guys down here as performers? They're already like the primary contributor or the primary creator. You don't need to put them back down here again. And same goes for the publisher. You don't normally put the publisher down here. Maybe we're moving to doing more of that with RDA, but normally I'm just like, you don't need to trace that twice. Um, all right, we got three more minutes before I hit the half hour mark, so I will talk fast. I do not know much about the Dublin Core. Um, <laughs> the Dublin Core. It's been a while since I've been in archives, but I'm guessing this bit past the slash it should recognize is not part of the title and truncate that. Um, I assume contributor might be, well, it's got creator and then this contributor, which is the publisher um, relation source. I, I don't feel like this is supposed to go in here. I'm not even, okay. Don't know if audio slash vinyl is a Dublin Core um, entity. Personally, I would think it would just be audio and not with the slash. This is clearly not an identifier. Um, coverage of Ath Atlanta, Georgia. Again, that doesn't make any sense. Um, so the bot is not coming for a job anytime soon. And that is that. Okay. My apologies. I did get it under 28 minutes just because. Thank you for listening if you are a cataloger and were willing to nerd out with me and look at how the bot does not make our jobs easier and frustrates us older catalogers who are just like, I could type this faster than arguing with this thing and trying to teach it right. <laughs> oh, well, I like my job, and I am pretty certain that it's going to be here for at least a little while longer while the robots get their stuff together. <laughs>